As a portrait photographer, I'm always looking for ways to improve my workflow. Any little tips that I can find or organization that will help speed up the post-production process is super important. Today, I wanted to share some tips on a very easy way that I think you can speed up some of your post. And that is with managing presets. If you're anything like me, I have tons of different preset categories. I have presets I've created over the years. They're buried within categories. I can't find them. Some of that stuff is actually taking time that could be sped up if you look at it a little differently. If you look here, I'm in Browse, and we have 16 categories, preset categories that come with On1. Some of these categories I have never used and never will use. Some of them could maybe just be renamed or moved around a little bit to make them a little bit more organized to make it faster and easier for me to find what I'm looking for. If you go to a category and you right click on it, we have a new little pop-up that comes up that you can either hide the category, rename, and you can also export. If you find an area, like for me, the cinematic is not a common one that I use, you can go ahead and right click and hide that category and it will disappear. Don't fret, if you accidentally remove something that you want, you can always go into the preferences and there's a little spot here where you can restore the hidden preset categories. If you take a little time to think about what kind of categories would be helpful for you in post. If you think about, if you're, if you're a portrait photographer and you have, you know, you shoot certain jobs, so if you have a, a seniors or weddings, there's a wedding category here already, or children, if you think about uh, events or themes, if you, like I shoot every summer, I shoot a vintage fields theme, and so I'm gonna use very similar presets for the, all of the jobs that come to that event. Or if you think about a location that you often shoot in or a trip that you went on, or kind of think about when you're editing what, what kind of categories would help you. I mean, if it's as simple as you just want a black and white and a color, uh, category or you know categories that have textures or however you can organize this. For me, I'm going to do the job that I have in front, which is uh, a session that I shot in downtown. This is an area that I go to often, so I'm going to create a category that is for downtown sessions so that I can use the same presets when I return to this location. So let's go ahead and create a set of presets. We'll just do a short little set here so you can see. I'm going to grab an image, we're going to pull it into effects. And I'm going to start in the starting points, and I'm going to grab the portrait preset. So remember, this is a starting point category, it really is just a starting point. So you can still make the changes and adjustments that you need. This preset has a tone enhancer, a color enhancer, a skin retouching, and a vignette. I'm going to take out the skin retouching. I don't typically use that when I shoot kids, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And I'm going to add a texture. One of my favorite textures is a grunge vignette light. I use that quite often. I'm going to pull the opacity back on that a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a sharpening. And I will grab a portrait sharpen. And then I'm going to go up to the vignette, and I'm going to do a little heavier vignette on this for fun. So we'll grab the big softy. And then I am going to go up to save the settings as a preset, so under the settings menu. And we will just call this color pop. And then we will click on the little pop-up and add a new category. So for this category, I'm going to call it downtown. So all of my downtown sessions can go, will have presets within this category. So I'm gonna save all the settings. I only used effect settings, we'll hit okay. And if we go back, we'll now see that I've got a downtown session here, or a downtown category. So I would create a couple more presets, probably three to five, or as I shoot down on these locations, if I find other ones um, or other spots, I would go ahead and create some more presets for those. But since we're already here, I'm going to add one more. So let's just add a black and white. And I'm going to add a tone. I like my black and whites a little bit more warm. So we're under the toner, we'll do the type. And I'm going to do a selenium one and warm that up a little bit. And then let's go ahead and save those settings as a preset again. And I will just call this one a, let's do warm black and white. And we'll save that in the downtown again. 
And then I'm gonna reset that and head back to browse and I'm gonna grab one more image. So I'm gonna grab a different one just so I can create a, a new preset. So I'll take this one up here. We'll pull her back in effects. And then under the faded and matte category, I'm gonna grab the intense matte pastel pink. It's a little bit heavy, so I'm going to grab that opacity and pull it quite a ways back. And then let's go ahead and save that setting as a preset. And I'm going to name that one Pink Pop. And we'll save that in the downtown again. So now I have three presets that I've created for this event. So let's go back to Browse. Now from here, this is where I think the best part is. I went into this session, I come home, I get it cold through, I open up the category in Browse, and I have the presets that I'm already going to use. So I can grab series of images that are similar, and I can grab the pink pop and apply it to all of those images. I can go to my next series, I can apply, let's say a black and white. Let's do this one as just a fun color pop. Let's do this one as black and white, and I can quickly go through and get all of my job edited. If anything needs to be changed, you can easily grab an image, you can open it up, make the couple changes that it needs. So if we wanna brighten the exposure up on this one, we can open it up and then head back to browse. Preset organization may be one piece of the puzzle in your workflow process, but I encourage you to take some time to organize those presets, get rid of those categories and presets that you no longer use, and get the ones that you love right at your fingertips.